لا يعطيك لا فيك رب في حالك بالله كيف امورك؟ احنا جاهزين الحمد لله في يوتيوب والتسجيل جاهز شايف شاشتي؟ دكتور ناصر شاشتي مش طالعة حاول اعمل شير سكرين ستارت بودكاست المفروض انها طلعت هلا صح؟ بلشت تطلع اه عملنا سكرين برودكاست تمام؟ اه هيك ممتاز اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اور توك توداي ويل بي اباوت شولدر سبورت انجريز بس ان سبيسيفيك ويل بي ادريسينج شولدر انستابيلتي سبيشلي انتيريور شولدر انستابيلتي سو تو ستارت ويز ما بعرف مين من مين معنا اختار لك مقيم دكتور ناصر اه اوكي دقيقة عبد الهادي معنا آه مرحبا سيدي اه معك سيدي يا عبد الهادي آه. هلا هلا تقرا السؤال تقرا السؤال احكينا شو رايك اوكي 56 year old laborer sustained a subarachnoid dislocation of the shoulder as the result of falling off a scaffold three weeks ago he now is unable to active rise his arm and has constant pain what is the most likely diagnosis display uh, from the history uh, so he, he, he has a sub sub uh, subcoracoid dislocation uh, type uh, displaced labor tear tear of the posterior cuff fracture of the glenoid blasty of axillary nerve uh, Blasty of musculocutaneous nerve. As a, at his age, 56, mostly associated with rotator cuff tear. Excellent. Right. Uh, another resident, Dr. Nasser. Okay. How's it going, Brimano? I'll see you back. The most common complication associated with anterior dislocation of glenohumeral joint is recurrent dislocation, axillary nerve injury, musculocutaneous nerve injury, axillary artery injury, post-traumatic degenerative arthritis. Uh, most common uh, recurrent dislocation. Uh, our talk will be a rapid review on shoulder anatomy, especially will be addressed uh, to the uh, junior residents. Here's a guide the shoulder sport injury and discussion about uh, etiology, mechanism of injury, history, physical examination, radiological finding, and management. Okay. Regarding the shoulder anatomy, you know about the glenohumeral joint anatomy. Uh, we will skip this part. Uh, a very important topic and statistical, especially for the junior residents, it's about glenohumeral humor joint static stabilizers and dynamic stabilizers. So you know that it's not a stable joint, it's most common dislocated joint in the body. And uh, most important static stabilizers will be uh, about articular congruity, the glenoid labrum, the concavity uh, uh, that make compression between the glenoid and the humerus negative intraarticular pressure. That's why it's commonly seen, especially with a proximal fracture that is subluxed. That's because the capsule is injured, okay? Uh, and tear ligaments, we see about them. And the most important one, as you all know, 
especially in abduction and its location is the anterior band of the inferior cranial ligament, inferior ligament. So when you, were, when you are tested about the most important band, whether it's in the shoulder and elbow, the answer will be always the anterior band, okay? Uh, my lecture will be uh, straightforward. I will pose whenever uh, there's a testable question. So here is a point we always prefer to make question about the bands of the ligaments. Okay, and the rotator interband. The dynamic stabilizers, as you know, the rotator cuff and the position of the scapula uh, thoracic joint. So this is, there is some dangerous uh, at risk position, especially in maximum abduction and sterilization. This is a um, slide about the static stabilizers we just mentioned. And this is an overview of the joint capsule. So regarding the ligaments, we all know the ligaments that surround the uh, shoulder, especially the glenohumeral joint. We have the superior glenohumeral ligament, and this is very important to memorize, and we always include in the question the exam. Uh, the superior glenohumeral ligament, especially in, when the arm is adducted, the middle glenohumeral ligament, in, uh, which is the primary stabilizer of the anterior translation, especially in abduct 45 degrees abduction and rotation. And the inferior glenohumeral ligament, especially the anterior band, in 90 degrees abduction and external rotation, as well as the posterior band. And uh, this is an overview diagram, which is very important to memorize about uh, each one of the uh, ligaments that we mentioned about, and uh, the most important in the clinical practice, as you know, regarding the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Uh, the posterior subluxation and IT friction uh, is very important in the diagnosis of the slab lesions. Whether the inferior part of the glenohumeral ligament uh, is most likely to be as to contrast the anterior translation and humerus in the uh, abduction and external rotation, and that, that's why it's uh, normally injured with pancreatic lesions and with anterior lesions. Uh, rotator interval, as you know, it's a common question, especially in the part of the second year uh, residence regarding the anatomy. The continents are the capsule, the superior glenohumeral ligament, the coracohumeral ligament, and the long head of the biceps. And the boundaries are medially lateral coracoid base, superior the supraspinatus, inferior the subscapularis, and the lateral is the transverse humeral ligament. And this is the rotator interval as we mentioned. Uh, the lab rope <laughs> is very important in structures. Uh, it's mainly uh, it's a deformed uh, structure to, to overcome the wide range of motion of the uh, shoulder and to comply with uh, interpose between two surfaces and even contact. Uh, it's a pressure, pressure sensor maximizing the, the feedback of the shoulder and attachment size for uh, muscles and ligament to optimize the tension. And as you know, the labrum has some anchors in order to stabilize it, uh, especially the inferior glenohumeral ligament, which is weak by anchor lesion, and the anterior superior part. Um, it, uh, there's an anchor which is located the bicep, which is weak whenever there's a slab lesion. The slab lesion, there's a lot of controversies about slab lesions, so uh, it's least likely to uh, ask questions about the uh, slab the exams. Um, there is a very important variance regarding the labrum and uh, should be memorized as well, especially the buffer complex, which is represent 1.5 for the population. Uh, and we, most of the time, we ask about the definition of the buffer complex, which is absent anterior superior labrum, uh, labrum and cord like thickening of the medium ligament. It's very important to organize it during the uh, shoulder arthroscopy because if you a misunderstanding with the alapa lesion, there will be a constraint of the shoulder movement. Uh, there is other normal variant <laughs> and should be on price. And the most common uh, are shown in the slide. Um, this is our position of the normal variant. And you can see the origin of the middle ligament. ligament. And uh, this is uh, the fourth complex, which is a cord like with the glenohumeral ligament and absent the superior lap. And this is very uh, important variant, and it's one of the most difficult questions during the exams. So why uh, why it's important that this those normal variants? It's very important to them because they can mimic slap here. 
Uh, these normal variants will usually not mimic frank occasion since it's located in P6 o'clock and we know that uh, they have a typical position. Uh, however, labular tears may originate at P6 o'clock position and subsequently extend superiorly. Uh, attaching the upper complex would be painful and restrict the external rotation and elevation. Let's skip that. Okay, so we will start. Um, uh, normally, uh, we have to uh, know our patients and uh, we have to uh, just make a separation between, a distinction between normal patients or a low activity patient, high active, high, high active patient, typical uh, athletes and elite athletes, whenever we are treating a shoulder injury. It can be caused from overhead and overuse injuries, such as internal impingement, cervical endurability, lapar lesion, and bicep stenosis. Uh, the mechanism also uh, mainly, mainly is traumatic, and uh, especially uh, with high impact injuries, it can cause clavicle fracture, AC joint injury, especially in, um, in young patients and floating shoulders. During the compact, the classic injuries is AC joint sprain and posterior lateral tears. And this is a spectrum of uh, variable injuries that can uh, occur during a shoulder support injuries. So to concentrate with our main talk today, it's about shoulder instability. And it's very important to distinguish between traumatic and untraumatic shoulder injuries. Uh, this is a pro term used for shoulder problems where head to humerus is not stable in the canine. Uh, it has a wide spectrum from minor instability or uh, micro instability uh, to a fragmentation. So, in order to understand instability, Dr. Nasser provided us with a very nice uh, 3D um, image in order to explain these topics. So, uh, just to uh, Imagine that we have uh, a golf ball based on earth base, and it, uh, we went to just to maintain this ball in its specific position in order to just to kick it. So uh, we have a static stabilizer, which is mainly which is important, most important is the bone. So it's very important always to study uh, the uh, the bone anatomy and to look for bone difficulty having uh, an unstable shoulders. So just to uh, imagine that we have anterior and posterior variants, shoulder dislocation will be the movement of the humeral head anterior uh, in relation to the glenoid. And uh, uh, whenever there is an impingement of the uh, humeral head against the anterior rim of the glenoid, uh, there will be two main injuries. Number one, there will be a humeral head defect, as we can see here. Uh, there will be a defect on the articular surface of the humeral head, and there will be a fracture of the glenoid rim. We call the first one hillsack lesion, and the second one bark and pony bark and lesion. So this is the hillsack lesion. When you reduce the uh, uh, shoulder and do a CT scan or an X-ray or an MRI, you will see the defect of the humeral head and the defect of the glenoid rim, the pony bark and the hillsack. Whenever you have posterior dislocation, which for example, after electric shock, uh, the, the exact mechanism will, it, will occur and the humeral head will shift posteriorly and just you have to reverse everything. So we have a reversal sac lesion which will be superior lateral uh, in the humeral head, that's per surface, and you will have the posterior inferior uh, rim fracture uh, uh, that will give us a reverse pony pump. As you can see here, uh, the, uh, there's CT cuts that showing uh, hill sack lesions and uh, bony parking. Bony park and, and whenever uh, you look for bony injuries, you have always to go. The gold standard exam is the CT scan. Now there's a lot of talk about uh, what is the critical size and what's the um, uh, about the hill sack lesion uh, about the glenoid rim and the critical size uh, from um, a study that was done in 2008 and um, repeated as a meta-analysis uh, by Yamato in 2020, uh, said that the critical size of a glenoid bone defect is six millimeter defect, which is equals 25% of glenoid width and 20% of glenoid area. But there's also a subcritical size, which is 
that was introduced also, which is more almost 13.5 regular load area. And this was seen because of the uh, low functional scores after a shoulder instability surgery and the increased risk of failure after bypass repair if you are not addressing or if you misunderstand the glenoid bone defect. And uh, that's why the, um, the, uh, this is very important to be analyzed before the surgery in order to plan the surgery, whether you want to go for arthroscopic stabilizing using soft tissue repair or you want to go to lethargy. And even letter J, sometimes if you have a large glenoid defect and large hill sac lesion, uh, will not be enough. Uh, which brings us to the concept of off track, on track lesions. As you know, on track means that the dislocation occurred without an impingement. Off track, this is just to make it simple. Off track means that there's an, an engagement of the humeral head on the uh, anterior part um, on, the, on the glenoid rim. And this is calculated uh, with the CT scan, uh, CT scan dots by making a perfect circle and uh, calculating the, uh, glenoid, uh, the glenoid interval and hill sac interval. But just to make it easy, if you are having, um, you need at least 83% of the glenoid surface, okay, in order to uh, have a healthy glenoid surface. And the uh, gray zone goes from uh, the hill sac region. If it's more than 40%, it will be also critical. Um, we have a lot of questions about hill sac region and we'll go uh, furthermore. So uh, the other thing that we have to talk about is the labrum. The labrum, as I said, it's uh, one of the most important stabilizers of the humeral head and anchors of the glenohumeral ligament, ligament, especially the uh, anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Uh, so this is an example of a bunker region. We lose the uh, anterior restraint of the uh, humeral head and it will make the recurrence of the shoulder uh, dislocation high. And this is an uh, anterior band of the inferior humeral ligament injury. So uh, what is most important or the most important thing is to have a balanced uh, glenohumeral joint with both static and dynamic stabilizers working together. Regarding the concavity compression, uh, this is very important to have a concave glenoid rim. And uh, this is very important regarding also the proprioception of the uh, of the joint. So uh, classification of the shoulder instability, it's called uh, according to the direction, whether it's anterior, uh, inf anterior, posterior, or uh, it can go to the uh, axial inferior dislocation, which is very, um, uh, very uncommon. Uh, the types, uh, regarding the types, from the mechanism point of view, we can have a traumatic structural, as you might uh, know, as a tubes and ampli. Okay, type one is tubes, type two is ampli. Type one means that it has a bound cartilage that requires surgery. Type two and three uh, means that uh, it's a multidirectional uh, instability that requires only rehabilitation, 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 rehabilitation. And if rehabilitation fails, you can go for capsular shift. So this table is very important. As you can see here, uh, type 1 is traumatic injuries. Post-trauma, the articular surface normally is damaged and you have a bunk cart lesion, okay? But the muscles are uh, normal. In type 2, you have a traumatic injury. Uh, the dysfunction will be mainly in the capsule and the laxity normally wouldn't be either uni or bilateral. In type 3, when you call it the habitual dislocators, when you so the teenagers dislocate their shoulder just to have fun. Normally, we have a problem in the muscles. Okay, so uh, in these uh, in these category of patients, it's it's not preferable to go to first surgery, and you have to concentrate on your rehabilitation. So to this study these things in details, uh, the traumatic uh, the traumatic sexual instability, as I said before, uh, acquired muscle action instability related to my trauma. Uh, caused by forcible movement that load the overall laxity recognized problem in athletes due to uh, overload and fatigue. 
the management will be always uh, rehabilitation, rehabilitation, rehabilitation. If it falls, uh, mainly concentrating on the aspirated scapular strengthening. So the most important thing in this physiotherapy plan of these patients is to control uh, the muscle coordination, especially the muscles around the scapula. If fails, you have to go for capsular shifting, shifting, but shrinking. This is capsular shifting. Said this before. So, according to the direction, as I said before, it might be anterior, posterior, either or <coughs> multi direction. Now, uh, the most important factor in um, or prognostic factor in shoulder dislocation is the age. Okay, as you see here, uh, you, have, you might have a high recurrence rate that relates with the age at dislocation when the dislocation occurs. So, if you have less than 20 years old, you have a 90% uh, probability of another dislocation, uh, and it goes down as the age increases. The risk of recurrence, as you see here from the, according to the American Academy, uh, is 66% recurring shoulder disability uh, for the patient less than 23 years old, 56 years uh, percent risk for from 23 to 29, and it falls when you are uh, appro approaching to the 40. Okay. Uh, regarding the associated injuries, uh, we might have the most common nerve injured is the axillary nerve. The uh, rotator cuff are common, especially in elderly patients more than 40 years old. Labral injuries uh, can occur, especially parkour injuries, and we have might have fractures and bony defects. Regarding the labral cartilage injuries, uh, we might have the huggle, the alpsa, the punk cartilage, and the glab. Okay, uh, these terms <coughs> are uh, very important to be memorized and uh, to know the difference between each one of them, especially for the seniors. On the fourth and fifth years, we might ask you about the meaning of Hagel, Glad, Alpsa, or the management of these injuries. For example, Hagel is the continuity of the inferior, you know, uh, uh, inferior you know, humor, ligament attachment, the humerus. Uh, of course, in the elderly, and always have to be uh, uh, repaired by open surgical repair. Um, the glad lesion is articular cartilage sheet of the labrum, and the alpset and the labrum cluster still bulging as the anterior labrum is absent. And we have also the pasta lesion, which is the process sleep bulging. Uh, unfortunately, to diagnose this patient, we need an MRA, MRI with the, with the contrast inside the joint. It's uh, uh, the radiology department in our institution does not perform this um, uh, this uh, imaging frequently, so the uh, possibility of uh, miss, uh, to miss these uh, injuries are, are high. Uh, to go into details, bank cartilage, which is a very important uh, topic, and it's uh, very testable in our. Uh, it's very important to be uh, understood. Uh, it's a lateral tears without osseous fragment, which is mean that it might be ligamentous or a bony region. And there's attachment of the anterior inferior lap from, from three to six to eight o'clock. So the anterior inferior part of the glenoid frame. Uh, complete tearing of the anterior scapular periost. <coughs> and the arrow shows uh, the disrupted periost. Okay. Park and cleave region, stepping of the glenoid frame and periost of the anterior femoroid is. Um, further explanation and type of the uh, um, soft tissue lap, soft tissue parkour, or ligament parkour. The osseous parkour can be diagnosed either in MRI and CD scan, and there's osseous fragment. That means there's a breach of the glenoid rim, and a common finding on X ray and CT scan. And this is an example of uh, a bony parkour. Um, Okay, reverse palm cut, as I mentioned before, you know, whenever you have a uh, serious location, CT images um, can be very helpful in order to diagnose these injuries. And uh, reverse lesion is another entity about lateral ligament is avulsion, like a palm cut lesion, but uh, with medial stripping and intact periosteum. And with the arm position, uh, the total lateral is in normal position. 
example, intact scapular uh, periosteum. So uh, it prevents the, uh, the contrast material whenever you have an MRI to go further and prevent the contrast from entering the tear. And this is an example about it. So in abduction, we prefer to uh, diagnose these patients in a special position, in abduction sterilization position. Uh, the inferior band of the inferior grain hammer ligament creates a tension of the inferior inferior labrum, like a contrast, as you saw by the arrow, which was the intact periosteum of the, um, of, of the periosteum sleeve. And the first lesions, which black arrow sees in abduction, uh, externalization position. Okay. And also, as I mentioned before, this anterior lateral periosteal sleeve avulsion, the anterior lateral is absent from the glenoid band. So the whole lateral is displaced uh, medially along the uh, periosteal sleeve. As you can see here, the uh, uh, image of an MRI. And uh, I show, I, I, I wanted just to show you all these images because most of the uh, last years of the American Academy Review, especially in the sport-related shoulder injuries, are concentrating about these lesions. So it's highly probable that it might come up in the ports. So uh, you have to be familiar with these injuries and you have to just know the definition, uh, the mechanism of the injury and the indication, which is uh, conservative or operative, okay? Uh, the pulsa is the posterior lateral periosteal sleeve avulsion. It's like ALPSA, but it's, it's the reverse ALPSA. So the posterior labral periosteal posterior sleeve origin is the pulsa. Uh, the GLAD is the glenolabral articular disruption, and it represents a partial tear in the anterior imperial labrum with adjacent uh, cartilage damage. And that shows you here uh, the cartilage defect. And I told you before, uh, these should be uh, uh, addressed surgically. Uh, another very important, and usually it comes up in the American Academy reviews and the OITE exams, the Hagel, a humoral avulsion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Normally, you will have a coronal view with the displacement of the uh, uh, contrast material inside the axillary recess, okay? Uh, because there's a discontinuity of the inferior glenohumeral ligament attachment of the humerus uh, with a large contrast deep. And as I mentioned before, it should be always uh, treated by over reduction uh, and surgical management. Okay. So other uh, fracture and bone defect, just to take up talk about it. Uh, regarding the hill sac lesion, uh, it's very important to quantify uh, the uh, uh, the volume of the hill sac defect. It's it's very difficult, and there is no standard method in order to quantify it. But for the sake of uh, questions, whenever you have less than 20% of uh, the articular surface volume of the humeral head, uh, you have to treat it conservatively, there's nothing to do. From 20 to 40%, you have to treat it either with recombinage if you are doing arthroscopic uh, bilateral repair or with allograft using uh, uh, humeral heads, okay? Uh, but if you go for more than 40% of the uh, hill sac defect of the volume, 40% of the humeral head, you have to go for hemiarthroplasty because the uh, possibility of a failure of your surgery will be high. So uh, to define, define these injuries, it's a chondral impaction injury, either in the anterior superior, but most commonly in the posterior superior humeral head, secondary to contact in the glenoid rim. It's not clinically significant unless it engaged the genome. So it's significant when you have uh, off-track engagement, off-track dislocation of the glenohumeral joint. And uh, whenever you have an off-track lesion, that means the possibility of uh, surgery, of your, if your surgery uh, or yeah, the failure of the surgery and the recurrence of the um, shoulder dislocation after surgery will be high. That's why in the recent studies, people tend to do a CT scan after the surgery just to quantify how much of the uh, uh, off-track lesion is left, okay? Uh, lesser tuberosity fracture is associated with the posterior dislocation, 
We say education is very important and we missed, especially if the patient comes with the ER with a long standard looking or decreasing with the limitation of the external rotation. Axillary review is very important. If you can do axillary review, please do CT scan, but don't miss this injury. Uh, Pony power cart uh, comes with 49% patient with a chronic dislocator or recurrent dislocation. The anterior inferior renoid um, defect, if it's more than 20%, is considered unstable. Uh, I told you before about it. It's critical bone loss and requires bony procedure to restore bone loss lethargy. Okay. Uh, lethargy is an anatomical procedure. The patellate and the presto is not uh, preferable anymore. Lethargy now is the gold standard when you have a 20% difference. But you have more. You have to consider other surgical options. If you uh, look to the seminar that Dr. Akhir um, uh, announced before, you can, if you just Want to know more about it, you can watch it. The greater diversity fractures associated with anterior dislocation, especially in elderly patients. Okay, we tend to treat these injuries conservatively, but there's specific indication if there is one mount, as you know, more one than uh, one centimeter displacement or 45 and 45 percent angulation. Uh, you have otherwise, you have to treat it uh, operatively. Uh, the hexac lesion. We talked about it. This is the, uh, an example of how the health mechanism of the uh, impaction it occurs when you have, you have the dislocation. There will be an engagement between the humeral head, uh, the, posterior, uh, the posterior superior part of the humeral head with the anterior and inferior rim of the glenoid, which make an impaction injury of the articular surface. Uh, we talked about the off-track and uh, on-track and the glenoid track. Uh, this is what I told you before, how to calculate the, um, the glenoid, uh, uh, the glenoid track and the hill sack defect as well. Uh, it's not for, uh, it, it's, it's beyond the residency level, maybe for the pillows. But um, the most important thing that you need to know is that 83% is the most important uh, number whenever you want to calculate the glenoid. Uh, deficiency and uh, there's two methods either by uh, having a perfect circuit on the glenoid on the coronal uh, on the digital cut of the glenoid and um, it's, it's not never normal when you want to study it but uh, the most important thing is to um, uh, of this uh, the circuit to attach the posterior part and the inferior part so the big d is the whole diameter and the small d is the defect so how you this how you calculate the uh, glenoid um, uh, the glenoid track and the hill sack. But just to make it short, if the hill sack defect of track will engage, that means the glenoid size will be more or larger, or the medial border of the glenoid the hill sack region will be more than the glenoid article track. But if it's not engaging, that means the hill sack defect is smaller than the articular uh, glenoid track. That's all what you need to know about this thing. So in summary, the main pathognomic components of anterior instability is capsulolabral uh, abulsion, the bunker, uh, the bunker, capsular redundancy, especially in the posterior instability, and the bony defect. Uh, now regarding uh, <coughs> physical examination and uh, the uh, treatment plans. Okay, we have the anterior, anterior posterior uh, translation and grading, okay, which is the shifting. That's to just to measure how much, if you want to measure how much the uh, humor head will be shift anterior posterior, and the anterior posterior level. So for, it goes from grade zero to grade three plus. This is very important, especially in the uh, in the OSCE and the, uh, in the short uh, case uh, scenarios. So if you have <coughs> humor and head translation up to the glenoid rim, that you mean that a grade one plus one, grade two, the humor head translation over the glenoid rim with a spontaneous reduction, grade three, humor head translation over the glenoid rim with locking. I will not be discussing the special test of the uh, shoulder instability because we will have to do it in another uh, lecture. Uh, the sulcus test is very important, especially in multidirectional instability. Uh, the grade one chrome humeral interval will be less than one centimeters, one to two in grade two. Grade three will the chrome humeral interval will be more than two centimeters. And this is uh, 
very important score uh, whenever you want to just to make a decision whether to go for uh, arthroscopic or soft tissue repair or to go into uh, lethargy. Uh, so there's uh, six main variables that you have to test and give to a specific score. Uh, it's the age, the degree of the sport participation, type of sport, shoulder hyper uh, laxity, hill sack um, on the X-ray, and the glenoid control. It's acceptable uh, uh, recurrence risk of 10% of atheroscopic stabilization of its less than six, but if the score is more than six, you have to consider uh, the tertiary procedure. Okay. Uh, so, regarding the presentation, the patient will come either with traumatic or our traumatic. We consider a traumatic sitting, uh, feeling of instability, patient pain of pain. Uh, caused by subluxation of excessive translation humoral physical exam. There's a, a, a many uh, specialties that can do with a variable specificity and specificity, but uh, the most important to do regarding that instability is the load shift test, the TOTI before, the abrasion test, the relocation test, such as sign and realizing laxity that have to be calculated by a very good criteria. Uh, X-rays that are very important to do whenever you do, are doing a shoulder CD. Uh, the complete trauma series, as you know, is true AP, axillary view, and scapular wide view. The West Point view will show you the glenoid bone loss. The striker view will show you the hillside region. <coughs> uh, normally, we ask com on, commonly about West Point and striker review, and uh, uh, especially in the residency exams. CT scan is very helpful to evaluate bony injury, especially in the preoperative setting or whenever you uh, have shoulder dislocation after the reduction, always do CT scan just baseline to document the injuries that uh, are present at that time. Uh, MRI, risk for visualization, lateral tears, addition of the interarticular contrast. Okay, uh, there is a very common question, especially the pops up in the oral exams. If you want to do, if you, uh, if it's indicated to do MRI after first location, and the answer is yes, because after the first location, there is some amount of damage that's done, and you might have also bank treatment for an intact injury from the first location. So MRI is indicated also uh, from the first time of this location. This is very important, and it's. Um, is a question that pops up all the time in the oral exams whenever you have a shoulder uh, instability scenario. Regarding the management, uh, you can go for a non operative or either non operative or operative management. Uh, regarding shoulder instability and shoulder in specific, we go always for rehab. Okay, so acute reduction or mobilization followed by physiotherapy. And the physiotherapy always in the shoulder should be limited, passive range of motion exercise at least for the first two weeks. Okay, immobilization and external rotation decrease the recurrence rate. Why? Because uh, it reduces the anterior lap from to the upper the glenoid rim, leading to a more anatomical healing. This is a theory. It's not, it has a, a little studies that recommend this, but it's better to uh, maintain an external rotation during the immobilization following an uh, episode of shoulder uh, dislocation. The physiotherapy uh, is very important, as we said before, to strengthen the dynamic stabilizers, stability the greater cup, but most importantly, the periscapular muscles, in order to uh, maintain a, a balanced um, balanced mineral joint. So, uh, if you want to go to, for surgery, you have to. Uh, just to sit for a moment, plan, select the patient, see the patient, take history, physical examination, the level of the um, athletic activity, the amount of glenoid bone loss, the amount of uh, hemorrhoid bone loss, hill sack, and if, if, whether it's an off track or in track lesion. All these variables are very important and can predict the success or the failure of your surgery. So it's very important to consider these four components. Uh, Anytime you plan for a shoulder surgery regarding instability, uh, anterior instability. So, uh, this is a very nice algorithm uh, regarding the primary traumatic shoulder dislocation requiring reduction. 
So uh, you have always to uh, rule out hugging lesions, as I told before, by um, MRI arthrogram. Surgical, surgical fixation is required open with the eye or open arthroscopic part of the bed and uh, rehabilitation for six months. Rehabilitation session is the uh, surgery that's required with the bracing and range of motion and the mobilization should be done in external rotation as it was before and return to sports within uh, or after six months. This is a diagram regarding hill sack that summarizes what we told, uh, what I told you about uh, regarding on track and off track lesions. In on track, that means there is no engagement between the humeral head and the glenoid rim. That's why the clean rim normally will be less than 20%, and there's going to be an isolated bunker repair during uh, through arthroscopic uh, procedure. If the glenoid bone the loss is more than 20%, can go for open capsular shift and let up drain. In case of off-track scenario, uh, you have to be more aggressive in your treatment. Glenoid bone loss in, in, the, in the setting of the glenoid bone loss less than 20%, you can go for uh, bankard uh, repair and remplissage. Remplissage means that you take part of the capsule with the infraspinatus and you have put an anchor and stabilize it with the hip stack region, uh, which will give you more posterior stability, but it would limit also the external rotation. Uh, the glenoid bone loss, uh, if the glenoid bone loss is more than 20%, you have to either consider the letter J or bone block, uh, free tricortical bone block, okay? Uh, this is another uh, management. So these are the surgical options that we told you before, arthroscopic repair, capsular shift, these are the indications. First, traumatic shoulder dislocation with bark adhesion compared by MRI, uh, or open bark repair with capsular shape with the glenoid difficulties. This is 20% with the lesion. The Presto and Lethargia procedure, uh, all you know, uh, it's a common question. Um, it might pop up as Dr. Gifter approach. From that, it might take you to Lethargia procedure. Uh, it's indicated whenever, whenever there is a bony deficiency with more than 20-25% of your deficiency. It goes through a shoulder multivectoral approach. Uh, the rocoid either conjoint tendon will be transferred uh, through the uh, uh, subscapularis. Uh, the most important complication uh, here is the new hardware problem as we can but one of the most important complications also is uh, androgen injury of the uh, subscapularis. Uh, Replicage technique, I told you about this uh, indication of your there's engaging large more than 25 or from 20 to 40 percent of LSA activities. Uh, the technique was steer capsule and the frustrating symptom are associated to the health region, and it might be performed uh, with concomitant partner. Uh, uh, this is uh, how you do it. And this is an arthroscopic review about Parker repair with capsular application. Uh, open Parker repair with capsular shift. It goes from the tubercular approach, subscapularis transverse or tenotomy, and open labral repair. We tend to do this um, surgery by arthroscopic uh, procedure in order to decrease the risk of uh, hydrogenic injury or uh, hydrogenic eruption of the subscapularis. Uh, Open capsular shift. You don't know about the. You don't have to know about the procedure. Just the indication. Uh, and regarding posterior shoulder dislocation, it's less common, but it's missed more. So it's missed about fifty percent, and the incidence is two to five percent. Uh, risk factors are bony abnormality, united with the laxity, and the mechanism normally is a shock. Okay, it might occur after seizure and late shock. And uh, the lesion associated with posterior instability. This is a list of all them. It's got taken from orthopolis, so you can go back and just view it. And this is an example about reversal sac with the uh, posterior pancreas. And the thing that I want just to uh, emphasize that and not to miss a posterior dislocation because patient might have uh, a limited range of motion, but there will be a range of motion. So if you're not dead, uh, pay attention to the, uh, which is called light bulb appearance on the uh, true AP X-ray. If you don't do an auxiliary uh, X-ray, you will be, you might miss it.
So the patient will be present with a flex adductive anterior patient position. Uh, activities requires regular pushing forward, flexing with comfortable alignment weightlifters. Symptoms will be pain with friction, abduction, and tenor rotation. Uh, with physical exam, there is a limited external rotation and blocking in tenor rotation position, which is very common. The prophylactic test and special test for chronic posterior instability are posterior load and shift test, uh, drag test, and chem test. Okay. Imaging, uh, we talked about this. Auxiliary view is very important. One power view it can be present, but if the patient is unable to abduct the arm, go just for auxiliary view. CD scan uh, analyzes the extent of location of bone loss, the chronic dislocation, and MRI will evaluate the associated ligament injury. This is an example about the condition, which is a concealed, uh, I think it just came in two years ago in a senior exam. The definition of lesion is the concealed avulsion of the deep posterior and feed a lab with apparently intact superficial lab And this is an example about the uh, lesion, especially it goes with the posterior band of the inferior glenohumeric ligament, uh, thickening and uh, concealed lesion, post labral tears, providing to them from medial to lateral direction and to preserve contralateral junction. The management mainly will be uh, uh, non operative with uh, reduction, but uh, uh, it can go for uh, you can go for either open arthroscopic posterior lapar pair, uh, the posterior pancart, open arthroscopic posterior capsular shift with the very closure. Uh, and there is uh, another in, in case in the setting of chronic injuries, so more than six weeks of posterior dislocation can go with uh, McLaughlin or the default uh, McLaughlin procedure. Uh, in the uh, original McLaughlin procedure, they were just uh, pretend to uh, transfer the, just uh, the subscapular tendon uh, more uh, distally. And uh, if you are moving just part of the bone, so the disorticosity with the subscapular tendon will be the knee modification uh, of the modified McLaughlin procedure. This is very important at the point of the exam because uh, this procedure is uh, being uh, reformed and conducted more and more because of the uh, percentage of the missed cases of posterior shoulder dislocation. But if you have uh, a large hill, reverse hill stack region, as I told you before, more than 40%, might either go for hemi or total arthroplasty. Um, uh, post reduction, you can go for a body phone and operative, and this is operative. You don't know, you don't know to have, you don't have to know about the specific uh, techniques of the uh, posterior shoulder uh, management, just know the indication and uh, uh, just a brief about special procedures. So, the complications of uh, any shoulder procedures, the most common is stiffness. Uh, especially after labral repair, recurrence uh, is the second most common. Okay, uh, this I'm talking up after surgery. The recurrence is the second most common complication. Degenerative or arthritis is the third common uh, complication, and it comes uh, especially with uh, with pancart uh, open open lethargy procedure. It may occur after 10 or 15 years. A risk capsulitis, oversight in the capsule, and nerve injury, especially the axillary injuries. Uh, I think I will stop here. Uh, the original study was going to be, I don't know, Dr. Nasser, should we continue or just to stop here and just to update? Think, later? Well, uh, thank you for this comprehensive uh, demonstration. This The original slides were uh, really uh, covering the whole shoulder sport injuries, but I think our topic today is for shoulder uh, anterior traumatic dislocation. So we can. Uh, yes, because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very, it's a, it's a vast uh, topic, and it uh, has a lot of things to talk about. And understanding the shoulder instability by itself, it's yes. it's, it's an important thing. So if you have, we we'll just all here open the discussion. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, um, I'll be pleased to answer them. Okay, any questions? Sure, I'll have an answer as well. 
Okay, pick up a residence will answer the question. Another question. Uh, okay. Bashar Mana, Bashar Khali. I see the mark. Careful, Mark. Alhamdulillah, khair, careful, Mark. Okay. Medial dislocation of the long head of biceps is most commonly associated with injury of which of the following structures? Coracoacromial uh, ligament, anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament, subscrab, transmajor dysplasia. Um, ligament. Uh, subscribe. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So whenever you see on MRI the long head is displaced medially, that means there's um, the, the, the stability or the anchoring of the subscapularis tendon and the pulley effect of the subscapularis over the biceps group is lost. Okay, And this is very important whenever there's a subscapularis injury, whether it's hydrogenic or traumatic. Okay? Okay. Think that's all? Yes. Uh... خالد غرايب لا لا كيف اسمعك الله يعافيك كيف امورك؟ الله يسلمك يا رب ويسعدك نشوف السؤال هذا ميديت بوست اوبريتيف مانجمنت فور بوث ستابيلتي انوتيت ذيس از ذيس انسرز مايت كم فور بوث روتيتر كف اند شولدر انستابيلتي بيكوز ات هاف اي ود جست ونت تو امفيسايز اباوت ذا بوست اوبريتيف ريابيليتيشن بروتوكول Okay. Okay, so, sir. Uh, immediate post-operative management after repair of a large rotator here should include first limited passive range of motion exercise, two full active shoulder range of motion exercise, three active range of motion exercise, and the restrictive exercise for protection is linked for three weeks, but no motion exercise. Five protection and abduction below for three week, but no motion exercise. So I'm sure I but I think one limited passive range of motion exercises. Yes, exactly. I can I know post operative management, the rotator cuff or the shoulder stability procedure should you go by limited and passive range of motion exercise at least for the first uh, within the first two weeks. Okay. Not the role of abduction below or protection after the cuff repair. Uh, abduction below it's for, uh, yes it's more it's, it's, i'm talking about the possibility of uh, rehab okay not about the uh, stabilization methods okay if you want to mobilize it yes you will mobilize it with abduction below okay but uh -huh. if you want to go for physiotherapy within the first two weeks you'll go for limited and basic motion exercise uh -huh. it's about the rehab protocol not about the stabilization or immobilization protocol okay yeah, okay, okay thank you uh, any questions about this topic? Any questions? I think we, we've been we've been through all about this. Uh, the, the, we have the highlight or the main, the more the most important uh, points regarding the shoulder instability. But uh, what I'm asking uh, is that you have to go right now, maybe tonight or tomorrow or during the week to uh, review this topic, uh, uh, solve as much as question as you can about it, okay? And uh, just the last thing I want to say that uh, these lectures, okay, uh, that are presented from the, our scientific committee in our department, it's just about the main topic. That doesn't mean that uh, you don't have to study the other topics of the shoulder surgery or sport-related injuries and other joints, uh, but that means that we want you to uh, uh, just to guide you uh, about the most important points within the with each talk. Okay, so expect any questions about the shoulder. Uh, uh, common questions normally comes uh, about any joint about uh, the portals of arthroscopy. Some people uh, in the last exam just 
uh, told me that I don't, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, I didn't know that I have to study the risk factors or the dangerous structure uh, during the ankle arthroscopy procedure. No, it's very important in the shoulder arthroscopy, in the wrist arthroscopy, <laughs> and in the ankle arthroscopy to review these topics. Shoulder and elbow hem arthroplasty, although we don't perform these uh, surgeries frequently in our institutions, but it doesn't mean that you don't know, uh, you don't need to know about it. You're uh, doing board exam uh, in the General Medical Council and you will have a certificate that you are a specialist, meaning that you have to know a minimum, uh, have, you have to have a minimum knowledge about all uh, the things that you have studied uh, that mentioned about the syllabus, okay? I hope this is clear for everybody. Uh, I had a question about the question or the 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 رائع هاي بس ممكن بعد اذنك تعيد الكونسبت اوف تراكت اون تراكت او انجيج ذا انجيج مش فاهم كثير اوكي هلا هذا بصراحه شوي ادفانس ما حبيت احكي لكم اياه بس يعني فور يور اون براكتس تمام هلا كان في سلايد خلينا نحكي عن هاي اوكي هلا انت هون شايف uh, شايف هاي الصوره اه سيدي معك شايف شايف هاي الصورة اوكي هلا هاي تمام انت شايف في الصورة اللي على الشمال في عندنا نورمال جلينول وعلى اليمين في عندنا بون ديفكت ديفكت بالجلينول تمام هلا الجهة هاي المخططة هاي هي البون ديفكت اوكي تمام البنكر هلا البنكر هلا ما في ستاندرد ميثود تو ميجر البون ديفكت للجلينول والبون ديفكت للهيل ساك تمام بس هم يعني واذا بتعرفي توبيك اسمه انترا اوبزيرفر وانترا اوبزيرفر ريابيليتي هاي هاي الاون تراك والاوف تراك ميجرمنت للجلينويد والهيلث ساكتيفكت هاف ا لو بريدكتيف اوف انترا وانتر اوبزيرفر ريابيليتي ذات مينز اتس نوت سنسيتيف اند نوت سبيسيفيك اوكي بس المتفق عليه عالميا انه لما يكون ذيرز الجلينو بشكل عام يعني الجلينويد ديفكت اللي انت شايفه ان شاء الله يكون عندي بوينتر بس يا ريت في سلايد اللي بعديه بيشرحها احسن اون تراك فراك عن الهيلسا لا انا بدي ابلش انا بدي ابلش هون صراحه بس انا لو اقدر اجيب بوينتر اوكي شايف هاي المنطقه اوكي هلا هاي هي اللي بيكون فيها الجينويد ديفكت وهذا هو نعتبر انه الميديال بارت اوكي اوف ذا هيل ساك ريجن تمام هلا اذا كان الديستنس تبعت الهيل ساك هون اوكي اصغر من الجلينويد ديفكت من السيرفس تبع الجلينويد ديفكت معناته انه ال- ال- ما راح يصير في انجيجمنت يعني ما راح يعلق ال- هاي المنطقه اللي هي فيها ديفكت ما راح تعلق على الرم معناته هذا راح يكون اون تراك اوكي معناته راح يكون هذا اون تراك اوكي معناته انه بخلع وبيرجع بدون ما يعلق الهيل ساك ليجن جوا الرم تبع الجلينويد واضح؟ طيب. 100% يعني انا هسه بتوقع اي اي اوف تراك يظل معلق صح؟ ما يرجع غير اوف تراك يس اوف تراك بيظل معلق الا لازم انت تعمل سيديشن للبيشنت تسحب الهيومرس تعمل له يعني زي اليفيشن مع ابدكشن وكسير روتيشن وتفك الامباكت الموجود اوكي؟ تمام يعني انا بت... يعني هذا الحكي ولا بالطوارئ؟ هذا بالاو ار اذا عندك اوف تراك ليجن خذه على الطوارئ يس خذه على الطوارئ واندر جنرال انستيزيا لانه ذير از هاي تشانس تو فراكشر ذا هيومرال هيد اور ذا جلينويد اوكي واذا عندك لوك شولدر اوف اوف تراك ليجن هو قرير عنده ريكرنت ديسلوكيشن عنده هيستوري اوف لارج هيل ساك ولارج جلينويد ديفكت تمام وجايك بلوك شولدر اللي هو يعني اوف تراك ليجن تمام يعني البون الهيومرال هيد مهنج جوا الجينويد ريم تمام تطلع على الاو ار اذا بتطلع على الاو ار بتعمل له ايذر كلوز اور اوبن انجيجمنت تمام هلا هذا 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 الاون تراك هلا كيف بيكون اوف تراك؟ اوف تراك اذا كانت هاي الديستنس تمام اذا هاي الديستنس اكبر من الجينويد ريم معناته انه الهيومر الهيد ديورنج ريسلوكيشن ويل ترافل اوكي 
فالميديا البارت هذا ماشي راح يعلق وين هون على الرم بيعمل شو انجيجمنت نروح على السلايد اللي حكى عنها الدكتور السلايد بتشرح المسافه البرسنتج بتاعت البي بيرسنت واي هلا هلا بدي اجيك هون هلا انت الجلينويد تراك تمام الجلينويد تراك انت بتحسبه بالعاده وين الانسيرشن تبع الروتيتر كف اوكي فذس از ذا جلينويد تراك اوكي وذس از ذس از سوري الجلينويد تراك اللي انت بدك تكتب اللي الهيومرال هيد انجيجينج ديورينج ذا نورمال موفمنت اون ذا جلينويد اوكي فلما يكون في عندك هون ديفكت وهون ديفكت شو اللي بصير معك؟ بصير معك اللي رح نشوفه بالسلايد اللي وراها هون هلا شوف الرسمه هاي هلا في عندك اون تراك اوكي وفي عندك الاوف تراك تمام الاون تراك شو بحكي لك الديستنس تبعت الهيل ساك انترفال اوكي او هي الفوليوم تبعت الهيل ساك انترفال انها فوليوم لما تكون اقل من الجلينويد تراك ما راح يصير في انجيجمنت راح يضل اون تراك اوكي طبعا. لما ديستنس تبعت الهيل ساك انترفيل اقل من الجلينويد تراك معناته ما راح يصير انجيجمنت اوكي يعني لما هذا الديفكت يكون اقل من الهيل ساك ديفكت اللي هي دي صغيره معناته انه ما راح يصير انجيجمنت ما راح يضل اون تراك لما يكون هذا الدي كبير يعني نفترض انه هون واصل تمام اوكي ف الهيل ساك انتر او الهيل ساك يكون كبير يعني اكثر من 40 50% معناته الهيل ساك انترفيل شايف الخط الاحمر هذا اكبر من الخط الاخضر معناته انه الديفكت الموجود عندك اكبر من الجلينويد تراك الجلينويد اللي يعني المساحه اللي بتسمح لك الجلينويد ماشي الارتيكولار سيركت بتسمح لك انه الجلينويد يمشي عليها بالهيومرال هيد اصغر من الديفكت الموجود في الهيومرال هيد اوكي فما بيلحق لينويد يلحق على الهيل ساك الديفكت الموجود فبصير في عندك اوف تراك بصير عندك انجيجمنت لهذا للهيل ساك ديفكت على الريم اوف ذا جلينويد اوكي؟ تمام <تصفيق> وهذا احنا بنحسبه بال يعني هو شوي ادفانس بدك تاخذ انت 3 دي ايمجينج هون يمكن هون شايف واضحه اكثر هي الحسابات اللي حكيت لك عنها تمام <تصفيق> بس هي شوي يعني شوي سبيشفكت يعني اذا كنت ابر لمب او سبورت يعني رح تقراها بشكل معمق اكثر بس اللي هلا انت لازم تعرفه بشكل عام بس هاي اذا انه الهيل ساك ليجن اكبر من الجلينويد تراك رح يصير في انجيجمنت معناته رح يصير في عندي اوف تراك اوف تراك شو معناته انجيجمنت الهيل ساك ليجن جوا الجلينويد ريم اللي فيه ديفك شو معناته؟ معناته انه البروجنوزيس تبع السوفت تيشو بروسيجر او الاثروسوبك ريبير للبانكر ريجن او حتى لا درجه راح يكون لو والريكرنس ليت او الفير ريت تبعت السيرج راح تكون هاي على الشغله بتهمهم اكثر بالطوارئ انه اذا شاف اوف تراك ليجن اذا كان اه انا حكيت اذا شاف اوف تراك ليجن بدها ترجع بالعمليات ما مش بالطوارئ يس دايركت اذا انت شايف اوف تراك ليجن وصورته اكس راي وشايف انت علاء معنا صوتك راح علاء مش سامعين صوتك احنا
شباب سامعيني ولا لا؟ سامعين سامعين بس يبدو انه الصوت تعطل عند دكتور علاء يكون جزء آه. ما في مشكله يعني ما بعرف اذا في ظل اي سؤال تقدروا تبعثوا لنا اياه جاوبوا عنه واذا في اي سؤال هسه برضه جاهزين اذا ما في اي سؤال احنا ان شاء الله الان خلاص ننهي لقاء اليوم في حد شباب عنده اسئله؟ اه هي دكتور عالم معنا مرة ثانية يسلم يسلم الله يعطيك ألف عافية محاضرة رائعة فعلا بكل معنى الكلمة وشاملة يسلم يسلم في حد عنده أسئلة؟ إذا حد عنده أسئلة يحكي لنا تمام على المحاضرة أو بشكل عام بنجاوبه يعطيك العافية دكتور على الله يعافيك خالد غرايبة بس سؤال صغير إذا سمحت بدي اسالك عن الرول اوف ام ار اي افتر فيرست بيسود اوف سكيشن هي ان يونج بيشن يعني سمعت انه الاكس راي خلينا نقول او السي تي ما في بانكرت ليجن ولا هيل ساك ليجن دو ام ار اي ولا يعني في رول او انديكيشن هلا اخر ستدي زمان كان يحكوا انه ما تعمل تمام اخر خمس سنين الستديز في ستديز بيقول لك انه افتر ذا فيرست جلين هيمر ديسلوكيشن ذير از اولويز سم اليمنت اوف مايكرو انستابيليتي Okay, this micro stability it could be uh, because of either um, uh, ligamentous or bony bulkard hill sac defect, uh, uh, terrible uh, uh, labrum defect, uh, whatever according to the AGI, you know, see a labral injury or a cuff injury. So, especially in young patients, okay, uh, yes, mm-hmm. it's indicated to do MRI after the first episode of shoulder dislocation. So the answer is yes. يعني اذا جاء حدا يسالك في امتحان would you do مثلا for a 20 years old patient first first episode of shoulder dislocation would you do an MRI yes I would do it okay واضح تمام ان شاء الله شكرا لك ودائما اعمل دائما اعمل بالسيت سيت اب افتر اي جون dislocation بالطوارئ اعمل سي تي سكان وبعدين اكتب له ام ار اي يعملها عادي يعني مش ايرجنت اوكي في حد واحد عنده سؤال ثاني اوكي دكتور ناصر اوكي دكتور علاء الله يعطيك العافيه سيدي الله يعافيك شكرا لك عفوا الله يعطيك العافيه شكرا لك ونحن نحضركم شباب نعطيكم العافية